Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I begin in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Dear listeners, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu. A very good evening and welcome back to Friday Night Fusion, the new sound of Great Britain broadcasting live and interactive on 93.5 FM, Unity FM across Birmingham and surrounding areas, both nationally and internationally, inshallah, on www.unityfm.net. Now, when we look around and see the Muslim community, Many people have, it could be argued, rightly assessed that unfortunately at times we do see a Muslim community in crisis. A group of young Muslims urgently in need of role models, positive individuals they can look up to. Not only do we see that, but we also see a Muslim community in need of guidance, in need of direction. How do you get somebody perhaps? who has moved away from the Qur'an, who has moved away from Islam in general, to come back to the beautiful book of the Qur'an, to come back to the beautiful sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And what better way to do that than through the vehicle of nasheed? And I'm honored to say this evening, mashallah, I'm joined by somebody who has around the world, through the vehicle of nasheed, promoted a beautiful and positive message of our deen, our way of life, Islam. An individual who has inspired not only the youngest from amongst us, but also the oldest, mashallah. And his name is Brother Zain Bika. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Zain Bika. Jazakallah khair for joining us on Unity FM tonight. Wa alaikum salam, and thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you today and also for the wonderful introduction. Barakallahu feekum, no problem, and uh, thank you very much for giving up your valuable time to be with us. Now, Brother Zain, if we could start off at the very beginning. You are somebody who I have had the pleasure to meet on many occasions. I always say to people, you're not only a good nasheed artist, but also a beautiful brother as well, mashallah, may Allah reward you. When a lot of people look at the excellent work that you have done in promoting a positive message of Islam through your nasheeds, was this from childhood always an ambition of yours? You know, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting question because, you know, I think whatever has happened over the years, alhamdulillah, has been a great blessing from Allah. And it wasn't really planned or expected or, you know, I, I didn't anticipate that it would... Um, it would, you know, affect so many people all over the world. So, alhamdulillah, whatever has happened has been a, a huge blessing and a bonus for me. I think possibly if I if I had gone out with uh, huge expectations, I think uh, sometimes, you know, it's the the success you have is not as sweet. But I think when you when you expect nothing, you know, and you get a lot, then you realize that there is probably barakah in it. And I often tell young people that. You know, if we combine hard work and good intentions, then Allah gives blessings in, in whatever we want to achieve. And, and I think that's been the, the, the main priority. I mean, I always enjoyed singing ever since I was a young boy. I, I, I can't explain it. I just loved singing all types of songs in school. And I took part in a few competitions and things like that. But um, I, I, never, I never really um, expected, you know, that one someday my songs would be playing in other parts of the world and people would know them and it's really just such a beautiful blessing that Allah has given me. Mashallah, mashallah. Now, a lot of people, rightly or wrongly, often describe you and your voice as the Muslim Michael Jackson, if you like. And I suppose that really highlights the fact that you could have made it very big in the mainstream. You could have published various pop videos and made a huge amount of money, enjoyed a huge amount of fame, probably more fame than perhaps you get through the vehicle of Nasheed. Why did you decide to do nasheeds rather than pop videos, for example? You know, I think it's it's, um, it's probably not something that I chose, but it's more it chose me. You know, it was uh, it all started in 1994. It was a crazy, crazy year in South Africa because we we became a free country. Nelson Mandela became the first president of a democratic country, uh, the first black president. And um, that happened in April. And then a few months later, you know, I was driving to work, and I heard this this uh, competition on, on the radio station. 
and uh, they said, you know, can you sing, and, you know, do you want to uh, talk about, sing about the changes in the country and, and how it affects you as a South African? And um, a few months before that, I lost my best friend, you know. He, uh, he passed away in a, in a very senseless killing in, in Johannesburg. And it was someone that I knew since uh, we were both five or six years old. We grew up together. We were in the same school, in the same madrasa. We played sports together. And, um, you know, we were, I was 19 at the time. He was 19. And all of a sudden, you know, I lost him. And, and this was the first time that I lost someone really close to me. And it really made me internalize. And then all of a sudden I heard on the radio station about this singing competition. I figured, well, maybe I should just sing, you know. I used to enjoy it when I was in school, and, you know, I kind of, when you go through tough times, you, you tap into uh, creative outlets that you had before, you know. So I, 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 I sang a simple song, and I, I sent it into the radio station, and I, I won the competition a, f- a few weeks later. Marshall. But I think because those two things happened at the same time, you know, I won this competition, which was very positive and exciting, but I lost my friend. I thought to myself, well, you know, if I had to sing songs, I should rather sing about something that, that, have a, that has a greater purpose, you know, praising Allah, praising the prophets, uh, trying to trying myself to be a better Muslim, you know. I think that's first and foremost. You know, I was exploring how to be a Muslim, and uh, I realized that, you know, growing up in a Muslim home is not enough. You actually have to live and be a Muslim. So I was going through a spiritual process as well, and that's how it all started, and that same year I just made a few simple songs about Islam. One of the first few songs is called, was called Give Thanks to Allah. And, um, and I think people just, you know, at that time, you, you, you know, you must understand there was not many songs about Islam in English. Mm-hmm, so sure. even out here, people were like, you know, that's interesting and our kids can listen to it. And, and that's really how it all began. And I, I didn't really have any expectation at that point. I was very young and right. there was nothing out there that I could emulate or I could follow any footsteps. There was... Nobody doing anything like this, and, and that's how it all started. What a beautiful story. A lot of artists that we regularly speak to, specifically those who make nasheeds as successful as yourself, often talk about needing that inspiration, that inspiration to want to write, and that ability that comes within you to write something that is so beautiful. You mentioned there one of your nasheeds, Give Thanks to Allah, beautifully written with a very positive message and a very catchy melody as well that a lot of people will be humming to themselves on the way to school or on the way to work. How did the inspiration come over you and how did you manage to gain such an ability within yourself not only to sing beautiful nasheeds but also to write them in such a beautifully aesthetic way as well well you know it's a, it's a, it's a, almost a paradox you know people often say that uh, oh you know they've learned a lot from my songs or they feel inspired but the person who's benefited most from these songs is actually me because I you know, I sang some songs, which were very simple, and then people expected more, so I I was on a journey, and I am still on a journey to become a better person, a better Muslim. I learned more, I got closer to Allah, I went for Hajj, and as I did this, I, I wrote more songs, and I sang them, and then I traveled, people invited me to so many places, and I met amazing scholars, and I, I was so inspired wherever I go, and by ordinary people, volunteers, radio stations, people doing amazing work and nobody ever knows about it. And as you go along, you feel more inspired, so you write more. And, um, and you know, so I'm the person who's benefited most from this journey so far, you know. Oh, sure. and, I, and I think the, the most important thing is I try to use whatever experiences I have and try to emulate that message in my songs and give people a very personal message, like, for example, Mountains of Mecca. You know, the mm, whole album mm. was written while I was on Hajj, you know, and so it wasn't meant to be. It just happened almost by mistake where yes. I, I started writing, I started having, um, you know, it's, it's hard not to be inspired when you're on, when you're on Hajj in, in, you know, the holy lands of Mecca and Medina. Oh, and I started writing this song. So it's a personal journey that when you share with others, people feel close to it because they can associate with your emotions because we are all human beings. No. So I think, I think the important thing is just to, to tap into your own experiences in your stores of, exp- of, of, of inspiration 
and put it down on paper and share it with someone else. I think that's what art is all about, is to take a piece of yourself and share it with someone else and say, this is who I am. A lot of people who perhaps do not quite understand the power of Nasheed may ask you, that do you honestly believe that such Nasheeds that people like yourself produce have the power to bring somebody away from a path that may be leading them astray back to the Sirat al-Mustaqim? Do you think Nasheeds have as much power as to be able to do that? Mm, that's a very, very good question. Um, I think I think it's also very important to put it, to put it in perspective. I think the medium of song is, is very, very powerful. I think um, if, if, I, if I had to give a lecture or you know, speak, I'd probably make a certain impact, but everybody likes to listen to a nice melody and some nice words that inspire the heart. And when you sing from the heart, it inspires the heart. So I think the, the, medium of, the medium of song, the medium of, of music is very, very powerful. Of course, we know that the majority of music that's out there for our children is not very beneficial. Mm. And, um, and, and, and when you see young people, you realize how important music is in their lives. Sure. When, they, when you're a teenager, you have all these songs on your phone and your laptops, and, yes. and it, it defines who you are socially, and it defines... It defines so many things in your life. In your life, so music is very important in the life of young people, and unfortunately, majority of it is not. The messages are not in accordance with what we would expect from Muslims. So I've always looked at this providing something better, something we're using the same medium, but trying to provide a better message. But on the other hand, it's only a means to something else. I've read many stories that people say that you know they feel inspired to, let's say, they listen to a song like "My Mom Is Amazing," to think so about cool. their mothers and appreciate their mothers a oh, little bit more. Yes, um, maybe a song like uh, "Mountains of Mecca" could inspire them to go to Mecca. Mm. I think mm. yes, you know, it could inspire, but action needs to take place thereafter, and, and you hope that, inshallah, you know, it's not a, it's not an end, but it's a means to something that people may start on a journey of, of learning more about Islam, learning more of the Quran. I mean, ultimately, the, the great source of, of knowledge yes. lies in, in the Quran and the Sunnah. No doubt. So, hopefully, the Nasheeds are just a means to that. I mean, it's not the end. It's really a means to that. MashaAllah. How, how beautiful. And I think something that a lot of people may note when they listen to your Nasheeds is that you get a sense of realization in your heart. You mentioned there the beautiful nasheed of yours, my mum is amazing. And I remember listening to that nasheed, hearing a very positive story about this young girl and her relationship with her mother. And then the end of the nasheed where it's revealed that she actually lives in an orphanage is truly emotionally very, very significant and very moving, subhanAllah. Yeah, it was, that was a very special moment for me. And, and I can remember exactly where I was sitting at the time, and uh, it was in the evening, and I was downstairs in my home, and I was just, I started writing a very simple song about my son, Muhammad, who was maybe five or six years old, and, and how, you know, he, in his relationship with my wife, and, you know, in the morning, and she, you know, she looked after him, and, and as I wrote it, I just kept on thinking of, of how unappreciated mothers are, you know, they do so much every day to make our lives better and to make the lives of our families and communities better. And mothers generally are just really unappreciated, you know. And um, it was only at the end of the song, uh, as I was writing the words, I thought to myself, hold on, what if this child doesn't have a mother? And uh, and I remember mm. I, I, I recorded a demo of the song. Yes. And um, I played it for my, my boys. Mm. But I couldn't get to play the end because I just felt it would crush them, you know? Mm, <laughs> mm, and and I really debated whether I should include the end or not. And uh, then I realized, you know, I live in a country where we have uh, a huge rate of, of orphans because of HIV AIDS. And uh, there's so many people who don't have mothers. And, and maybe this will, you know, despite it being a very really sad story, but maybe it will inspire us to, to, to think about our mothers more carefully and also contribute to orphans. So I decided to include the ending, but um, it was really a special moment for me, actually. Mm, and every nasheed you write, there's always a beautiful story behind it. Now, when artists like yourself 
decide to write these beautiful nasheeds, you have to look at your target audience, the people that you want to reach out to. And something that I've noticed personally is that although your nasheeds are universally recognized, appreciated and celebrated by all people of all backgrounds and all ages, there is a specific emphasis and a specific appeal that I've always identified in your nasheeds to children and young people. Why have you decided to aim your nasheeds specifically at or with children and young people in mind? You know, I think um, so it's, it's, it's a very interesting question as well. I think I've, um, you know, I work full time. I work with my father. I'm, I'm not many people know this, but I'm an accountant out of all things. So <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> that's what I do for a full time for, for my full time job. But um, whenever I visit schools, you know, I always think if I had to choose a like a profession, I, I, I might have become a school teacher because I love I love working with children. I think the the innocence is just so beautiful and. And also, you know, they are the future. You know, they, they are the gift that Allah gives us to ensure that we will work towards tomo- uh, tomorrow, you know. And, and we as, as, as the older generation or parents, or you know, we need to always think about, you know, the children because they are going to inherit the world that we leave behind. Somebody told me such a beautiful thing yesterday. They said, you know, a, a people or a group of people or a community is strong. When the when the old people plant trees, you know, with shade, they will never sit under. So hard. You know? Mm. So it's really about building and working for our children. So I think I've always had that in mind. I've always had my children in mind. As a father, I know the challenges that children face. It's immense, you know. Today, our children face uh, challenges that no generation has faced before in terms of how fast the pace life moves at, you know, I, I call them the Facebook generation, and, you know, there's no mm. value in things, you know, people just, you get something, you upgrade, you get something again, you change the status, you move on, you, yes. you know, <laughs> and, 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 there's, and there's no really appreciation mm. in anything, mm. and I think um, that's why, and, and yet, yet, for those same, the generation, music is so important, so to use the same medium to try to reach them with positive messages. And that's why today I'm so happy, you know, when I when I look at this nasheed genre, if I can call it that, and how it's grown and there's so many people doing it and so many people coming in with their own unique styles and, and their own unique voices and, and bringing positive messages. I feel so happy that, alhamdulillah, you know, they're providing means to, to at least make a difference. MashaAllah, absolutely, and everybody working together to promote that positive message. Now, something that affects young Muslims time and time again is the image of Islam and the fact that young Muslims at times feel very much targeted, especially after the terrible atrocities of 9-11 and 7-7. And perhaps we regularly hear in the media that these young people do not know how to educate people about Islam. They do not feel as though they have the capacity or the knowledge to go forward and defend Islam in the best way that it should be defended with the type of knowledge that should be utilized. What would be your advice to such young people out there? What can they do to spread the true message of Islam in an age of great, I suppose it could be said, Islamophobic views? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's a challenge that faces us all. I mean, uh, wherever we go, we, we, it's in the media all the time, you know, we're under pressure. Um, I once spoke to a scholar, um, you know, about this very thing, because you know, sometimes as, as people living in our own lives, we can feel absolutely helpless, and we feel, you know, how can we bring about change? But I think <clears throat> it's important to remember that even the trials that we face today come from Allah. And we have to look within ourselves that why is it not changing our condition if and then it's because we need to you know we to we need to help ourselves and I think that the key thing just from my personal opinion is that it's small changes that we need to incur, so you know we can't think about big things that are perhaps out of our grasp because that makes us feel very helpless mm. so it's small things in our communities reaching out to our neighbors smiling you know they say a smile is charity 
to uh, to send them, you know, to make little books. I, I know uh, a guy last week, for example, uh, he's a businessman, and uh, he's sending a client, his client some, some, you know, gifts, and he's including in a sort of an MP3 player with some uh, verses of the English Quran oh, and, uh, and some anashid, and yes. he's using this opportunity just to, you know, you know, give them some, give them the true message because one of the one of the great opportunities that this brings is people are talking about it all the time. So we need to use it and just try to portray the correct message. And the best way to portray it is in our behavior, is in our character. Mashallah. And that can make an enormous amount of change. And of course. Try to positively contribute to your community. In every community, there is an old age home. In every community, in most communities, there are there is an orphanage. There are maybe a homeless shelter. There is uh, beggars on the street. You know, what, in whatever capacity, there might be a nursery school, there might be a hospital. Whatever community, spend of your time, go there. You know, even if you, you might not have a lot of money, you mm. can do little things. You know, go there, spend time, you know, telling an old person, I'll write a letter for you, or what would you like to say, tell me your story. You know, these are remarkable changes that we can make. The smallest deeds done consistently are the ones that Allah loves the most. So I think, to answer your question, if we all work in these little ways, small little ways consistently, and it's not difficult, I think we can make this, this, this world better, you know, inshallah. Inshallah. Nasheed artists like yourself, Brother Zain Bika, are appreciated and celebrated by many here in the Muslim community. You only have to go to the local madrasa and speak to some of the children there and mention the name of Zain Bika and they all know immediately who you are or the name of Yusuf Islam or Dawood Wansby or some of the wonderful great people performing these wonderful nasheeds on a day-to-day -day basis. But how are your nasheeds received by the non-Muslim community and do nasheeds that you produce really act not only as a form of da'wah for people who are perhaps non-Muslims, but also people who are Muslims educating them about Islam. Is there a two-prong approach there, uh, an appeal that... Yeah, I think, uh, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, if, if, if I look at just the writing that is, you know, my writing personally has changed a lot over the last few years, given, you know, all the challenges you mentioned earlier that we face as a Muslim community. So, you know, I, you know, I will release a song called Who I Am. It's about being positive about, because we know, you know, there's huge challenges with young people about identity and about, you know, living up to expectations and bullying. So that was a positive song which, you know, got a, a lot of acclaim from the broader community. Uh, we have songs like First We Need the Love, which was yes. really about bringing people together. It was, of course, it was a huge... Um, the Football World Cup in South Africa in Mashallah. 2018 was a huge event for us. So of we course. used that as a platform. It became it became one of the official songs during the time it played on, you know, mainstream television many times. And, and that, that people saw a Muslim uh, on TV uh, singing a positive message. And you know, inshallah, they can make a difference. Just recently, last November, I released a song called Better Day, and it was in conjunction with the South African government uh, for 16 days of activism against uh, domestic violence. So, right. you know, I thought I would add my voice as a man, as a Muslim, to, to talk about, you know, gender-based violence in homes where children and women are being abused at the hands of their loved ones. So when we, when we talk about causes that affect all people, I think people then really maybe change their, their mindset about, about, you know, Muslims and what Islam means, and they realize the true message where, you know, Muslims are at the forefront of every battle against, uh, you know, injustice, against oppression. Sure. And I think that's where, you know, we need to, to, to use, um, again, this, I, I come back to it, it's a very simple effort, effort the simple songs, yes. which might not bring about major change, but um, they can bring about little change in maybe a few hearts, which, which is what ultimately we want. And Alhamdulillah, I've been very fortunate that over the years I've had so many emails and contacts and, you know, people meeting me who are not Muslim, who just enjoy the message and mm. they feel, you know, they, they feel somehow that the message is pure and, and that's what we really want to show. Alhamdulillah. Now, you also produce nasheeds in various different languages. I know a lot of your nasheeds are predominantly in English, but I've heard nasheeds that you've produced in Arabic, in Urdu and various other languages as well. 
What is the motivation behind that? A lot of people may say that when you look at the Western world, a lot of people speak English. So why do you think you need to produce nasheeds in Arabic and Urdu, for example? Yeah, well, you know, I think every every song has a story and, um, and, and and a motivation. I think some of the Arabic songs, are, as you said, the majority of the songs I've done is in, in English because it's the language that I speak and it's uh, it's the medium that I have, you know I choose to communicate. But I think uh, like a lot of the Arabic songs that I've I've done are just ones that are really close to me and I love them and and I sort of they have a uh, an experience or, or a personal connection with. Um, I've generally not done too many Arabic songs because I just feel there's so many amazing Arabic artists out there uh-huh. who, you know, who can do so much better. Similarly with Urdu, you know, I've done, I think, only one or two Urdu songs, and the one I've done recently was Just Me Ahmed Rasul. But yes, yes. Primarily because my mom used to sing it for me when I was young, and, and I always loved that song, and, and Alhamdulillah I got to feature with someone else who did the Urdu, and I did a little bit of it. Uh, on the latest album, it was a little bit more strategic. Uh, when I did Hope, um, I always love the, the the power of African vocals, you know, because I, I, mm, I'm mm. born and bred in this country, and the African Zulu harmonies are really unique. And so there's two songs in Zulu, and and again, you know, we are we are growing a huge. I mean, the Muslim community of indigenous black people from South Africa is growing tremendously, and um, music is very much part of African culture. You know, it's mm-hmm. um, it's really undeniable. You know, when we open up Parliament and we have funerals and we have weddings yes. in Africa, everybody's singing. You know, wow. and uh, very mm. much in the tradition of Nasheed, where it's just a lot of voices with drums. Mm. So I feel that you know, to do to do songs in, in local dialects like Zulu um, would again, you know, empower new Muslims who are coming to Islam, um, who are, who where Zulu is their first uh, you know language will empower them just to feel, you know, a part of a bigger community. And, and I felt it was important. And alhamdulillah, you know, wherever I've been, um, I see so many, you know, uh, South African children singing the song. It's you know, perfect Zulu ex- accents, and it's wonderful. Sure. Absolutely. And I suppose there's a big similarity there between Nasheeds and the African culture. The fact that the African culture focuses a lot on drums and these beautiful harmonies Absolutely. that really do appeal to an international audience. I suppose you've played a key role there, not only performing an act of dawah, but also spreading part of the African culture on an international stage and on an international scale. Yeah, I think it's a very good observation because, you know, all my songs have got a very strong African influence. So, um, I think, I mean, whether it's in the backing vocals or even in some songs where the language is in another language, I think one of the strangest things that I ever, you know, came across is when I was in India and one of the, the children there was singing in Zulu. They didn't understand what it was, but they were singing it. I was, I was amazed. That, uh, you know, people, you know, again, Alhamdulillah, I'm very proud of, of my South African heritage. And, yes. And, uh, you know, yes. being a means to, to at least show the power of African vocals. Of course, of course. Now, this is a very difficult question to be put to any artist, but a lot of our listeners have been getting in touch and asking, you've produced many nasheeds over the years, very beautiful ones as they all are, but what happens to be your own personal favorite? Do you have a personal favorite uh, as such? You know, it, it is uh, it is a very difficult question. I, I've I've got quite a few actually. I mean, I think if I can narrow it down, um, I think all I know is in Mount of the Mecca would come out as the two you know songs that I really enjoy singing, and I really I was very you know blessed to have written those songs. You know, I, I was truly inspired. Uh, Mom is amazing would be another one. Um, I also have a very strange uh, song that nobody really, many people uh, talked about. It's a song called Time, and it was uh, released on the Our World album very many years ago in 2000. And yes. I think 2002, but the song is called mm. Time, and that remains one of my, it's a very short song, probably like under two minutes, but that would be a favorite as well. So yeah, those, those would be the ones that would come to mind. MashaAllah. And just mentioning those nasheeds, I've heard all of them, alhamdulillah, and they're all very reflective and very calm. There's this great sense of the fact that you're not rushing 
And it makes a nice contrast, I suppose, to the type of lives that we live. Is this a little indicator from yourself, very much telling people to slow down and think sometimes about our next move, our next action? Yeah, probably a reminder to myself because <laughs> I probably need that message <laughs> more than anything else. You know, mm-hmm. you know it, is, it is strange because every song that I've done is, uh, is based either on a personal experience or based on, on a message for myself. So, you know, people often think that, you know, as I say, I said earlier, you know, these songs benefit me more than you know, anybody else because it's it's a lesson for me to when I when I sang Allah knows it's because I was in need and I realized, you know yes. Allah knows, Allah knows what I'm going through and no. mm-hmm. you know, so 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 it's a wonderful way and and, and I think the the evolution of, of this of Nasheed mm. uh, in terms of the live shows um, okay, I've, I've come to terms with it. It's a means. It's a means to you know, to promote your your songs. Yes. In many parts of the world I go and they've never heard of my songs. And when I perform live, it's the best form of promotion. But yes, you know, I would really much prefer you know someone listening to it in his car, or in his home, at his own leisure. Absolutely. Without ever knowing you know me or you know or seeing me live because. Right. I think the live performances sometimes become, you know, about something else and not just the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More, more, more about, I suppose, people thinking as though you're promoting yourself, not uh, the message. Of course, you're always promoting the message, but I suppose a dangerous byproduct is that uh, everybody hears about you, whereas you want them more to hear about the message and what you stand for more than anything else. Yeah, and, you know, in, in a live performance, you know, it's sometimes very easy to forget about what you're listening to, you just, it's, you know, sometimes, you know, the the environment itself is so, you know, jubilant and people are so excited and happy. Yes. And, and rightly so, because we need to also be happy at times, you know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But, um, you know, but, but a person listening to it in his car, in his home, and reflecting on the words, you know, those are possibly the best... Mm the best ways, you know, inshallah, to, to give the message across. Inshallah, these nasheeds very much speak loudly to people as an individual. I know from hearing your nasheeds, whenever I listen to the mama, I'm on my own. It seems like a personal message to me rather than a nasheed released and listened to by millions and millions of people around the world so i completely understand and appreciate what you're saying and brother zane we do again really appreciate your valuable time this evening and a lot of our listeners are very happy that mashallah you've given up your valuable time to join us today but just before we leave is it possible perhaps for you to just let us know what are you up to nowadays is there anything we should look out for any plans to come here to birmingham or to the uk yeah, well, no thanks. Uh, uh, I've I've, uh, I've done a few shows uh, locally. We've uh, we've had uh, sort of two back-to-back weekends. But uh, the big thing that I'm working on, which is something very different, is uh, I'm working on a cycling project with Islamic Relief for for water in, in West Africa. Okay. And uh, you know, I've never cycled in my life. I, I, <laughs> the last time I cycled, I probably was like 13 years old. Right. On one of those BMX bikes. So anyway, mm-hmm. they asked me to cycle from. Vietnam to Cambodia, which is like 400 kilometers. It's going to be gru- grueling next month. I've only got four, four weeks to prepare. Mashallah. So I'm busy training hard, and my son Rashid is going to join me as well. And, oh, mashallah. Uh, but I think, I think it's a fantastic course. So yes. So if people you know, can contribute, just go to my website. There's, uh, you, know, you can donate whatever amounts you, you need. It's fantastic. For, it's a good cause. It's ever since water projects in West Africa, you know, where I live in. And, uh, you know, yeah, so that's, I'll, be, I'll be training hard and trying to do my best in the next <laughs> four weeks, inshallah. <laughs> MashaAllah, we wish you the very best of luck with that and may Allah Azza wa Jal give you the ability to raise as much as you can for that worthy cause and just before you go Brother Zain could you give us a blast of uh, one of your nasheeds just a quick one inshallah yeah, sure. Any particular song you like me to sing anyone you like inshallah anyone that uh, you like inshallah hmm. uh, I actually so many come to mind I'd let you choose whichever one you you'd like to hear well how about one that perhaps you know is a beautiful one but not that many people talk about perhaps one of your less known nasheeds that uh, many of our listeners may not have heard about Hmm. that makes it much harder (laughs) time for example Um, the nasheed time from your album yeah Um, 
Yeah, I could, I could try that. I haven't I, actually. I've never sung that song live. Oh, <laughs> so mashallah! <laughs> Exclusive, alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so be kind because it's, it's over the phone. No, no, well. I, no, no. Okay, no, I'll try no, my best. Bismillah. Um, oh yeah, but, but just to give you, uh, you know, a little sort of story behind the song. Is that, mm-hmm. um, I, 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 I live in Johannesburg now, but I grew up in Pretoria, a small town about fifty kilometers from here, and um, you know, I mean, all my memories, everything is, is stuck in that, in that. Town, you know, in Lodian. Sure. So when I visited there, I was walking around and I was just thinking about how time passes by and you know how it makes us either you know go through tough times or good times. And so anyway, um, that's just the the concept of the song. So I'll, yeah, I'll sing a bit of it. It goes like this: uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mm. Just go ahead. Traveling past, walking fast to the field of dreams. Hear the children scream. Every corner represents. A different image in my mind, a momentary emotion, space spent in time, in time. Memories fade like a dusty window pane, and you can't see your past no more. So take the best of every moment, take the best of every man. Then move on, and don't ever look back, don't look back. Something like that. Jazakallah, <laughs> mashallah. How beautiful, very, very beautiful indeed. The first time ever you've performed that live exclusively know, on Unity FM, mashallah. Mashallah. We do really appreciate your time, Brother Zain, inshallah. Please do keep us posted on uh, what you're up to, and we certainly do hope that next time you're in Birmingham, you'll pop down to the Unity FM studios and uh, we can have a chat with you as well, inshallah. I would, I would love to, and I just want to say thank you. It's been one of the best interviews I've ever had, so thanks for the asking, you know, such good questions. And, and also, I just want to say, you know, thanks for the support, because it's uh, radio stations like yours that have kept my songs playing over the years and given me support. So it's really the honor is all mine to be, you know, to be, to be able to give back. And I just want to say thanks for all the promotion for all the years. And Jazakallah khair. Barakallahu feekum. Brother Zain Bika, live from South Africa. Jazakallah khair for joining us this evening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.